Hi, my name is Freedom Coder, and in this video tutorial we are going to take a look at loft spline actors and tackle a few problems concerning orientation in 3D space. If we take a look at our previous mover, we can note a few problems if our spline curve contains a looping then our mover will twist at the 90 degree angles like that and to understand why this happens we need to understand how the rotation is calculated it is done by using the y tangent and cross multiplying it with the world's z-axis and this gives us a plane on which the rotation is projected. In case our tangent is 90 degrees, the tangent and the z-axis are the same vector, so UDK can calculate no plane. And the moment the tangent will go out of 90 degrees again, the calculation of the cross vector will be inverted so the rotation of our actor is different from before and that causes the twist. As we move to loft splines we will encounter the same problem because loft splines are used to project meshes along the spline curve and to do that they need to calculate a plane on which to project the meshes on and we can run along the same problem that UDK cannot calculate the plane correctly and in this case our mesh will be twisted like this. To counter this problem loft splines have an attribute called world x dear and this provides the additional vector to calculate planes. While UDK uses the global axis for calculating rotations. In the loft spline actor we can give UDK a second vector separately and by doing that we can guarantee our mesh will always be aligned properly. So in this example our tangent goes along sorry goes along the global x-axis and our second tangent should be the y-axis. However, moving along the curve we see that the tangent is aligning to the y-axis and therefore we cannot calculate the plane anymore. And to counter this I will set a different vector. And now the second vector used to calculate the plane something should be something like this oh. and that way the two vectors are different enough to guarantee that the calculation of the plane will always succeed along the curve. So if you have twisting in your mesh change the x dear and the best way to change it is that it is always diagonal to the curve but it always works as long as the vector is different from the tangent of the curve. Okay, that out of the way, I will now show you how to create loft splines. You can create them similar to spline actors. You search for loft spline in the actor classes tab and drag one into the viewport. And just like spline actors, you can all drag new ones out of the old ones. And now you have to select a static mesh. And the spline actor has an attribute called deform mesh. And you select your static mesh in the editor, click the green arrow, and assign it to the spline. 
Now you will notice that the mesh doesn't show up and that is because by default the tangent and the exterior are the same value and that's exactly what should not happen. So you have to either change the tangent at the beginning like so and let me just reverse it like this and either change the tangent or rotate the spline. And once UDK can calculate the correct mapping, it will project the mesh. Compared to the basic spline actor, the loft spline actor has a few more parameters. Uh, for example, scale X and scale Y. These are to set the initial scale of a mesh. I'll just modify them. So you can stretch the mesh at the start and it will be interpolated to the goal spline actor, which can in turn be smaller or wider. Same goes for scale Y. I'll just reset that. And the next thing spline actors have Hello, um, excuse me. The next thing loft spline actors have is roll. You can change the roll. Uh, let me just set that by the roll of the mesh, and it will be interpolated along the curve. Okay, let me reset that. And the last thing is an offset. So if you don't want your mesh to be centered on the curve, you can offset it in the y or uh, sorry in the x or y direction, which in this case is the local y and means up or down on the spline curve. Another thing to keep in mind is that oops, that interpolation of meshes can only be as smooth as the mesh itself is. So that means um, if you have a mesh with very few vertices, then you cannot expect it to bend smoothly. Let me just make a nice smooth curve. There we go. Um, if I'll switch to wireframe, you can see that this mesh has very many vertices and they can be interpolated very smoothly. Just go back. If we take, for example, yeah, let's take this mesh. If you look at the wireframe, you know, we have very few vertices along the arrow component. And if I set this mesh as the form mesh, then we'll have a very ugly and twisted mesh because most of the vertices are at the start and the end of the component. And that way in the middle there can be no interpolation. So you have to always keep that in mind if you want to have smooth interpolations. That's it for this tutorial. In the next and last part of the series we are going to change our mover and custom spline actor to use loft splines. This way we can fix the twisting problem and make use of the roll attribute to fine tune the mover's path. The new system will also allow us to create a roller coaster like behavior where the mover can be a cart riding along the track generated by loft splines.